Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to provision an RDS Aurora serverless database with the BlueWasp Pro CloudFormation Blueprint. Okay, uh, This blueprint uh, provides you with a way to provision uh, the database and allows you to actually customize it uh, pretty um, uh, much everything you need. Um, auto scaling uh, settings are configured with parameters. That's pretty easy to configure. Storage is encrypted by default. Uh, you could use a existing DB subnet group name if you have one, or you could just provide subnet IDs and then uh, the blueprint will create a subnet a, a subnet group for you and use that. So it essentially it manages the subnet group for you. You can also create an optional managed route through record that points to the cluster endpoint. Okay, so that just makes it a little bit prettier. If you choose to do that, I kind of suggest using internal route through records, not external, if this is a database. Uh, cluster parameters can be configured with code. Uh, so um, that's pretty much what is in this blueprint. To use it, it's pretty straightforward. You add the blueprint to your gem file, you configure some config values, and then you deploy the blueprint. Here are the, all the instructions, which we'll go through in the demo in a bit. I also want to point out this. Currently, Aurora Serverless only supports uh, engine version 5.6 here. It doesn't support currently yet Postgres or newer versions of MySQL. I'm sure in time AWS is gonna really support for these other versions. Uh, so just check back uh, for updates here. Um, uh, auto scaling settings, you can see it. It's all right here, pretty easy to configure. This, in my opinion, is pretty cool. Uh, and this is the cool thing about Aurora Serverless. Uh, you don't even have to manage uh, at the instance level. Uh, you do give up some control here, but if your team doesn't want to manage databases, this is a pretty good option to go here. Uh, if your team does want to manage database, let me scroll back to the top here. There is a Roar uh, blueprint that gives you uh, basically a Roar still, and uh, it just gives you a little more control of the nodes, okay? And the kind of the parameters and all that. Uh, and if you want even more control, if you need even more control, there's also the RDS uh, blueprint here, which will provision you traditional RDS databases. Okay, but we're doing Aurora serverless right now. There's auto scaling settings. Here's uh, how you use custom VPCs. Uh, here's just uh, some notes about encouraging you to put uh, the database in a private uh, data subnet. Now, um, we are gonna use the reference architecture and build on top of that. <laughs> it's, I've already, um, Martha Stewart it, the VP has already been uh, provisioned and I'm gonna basically just use the private data subnet there. If you have an existing VPC, it's not a problem. You just configure your VPC values in there instead of the reference ones that I kind of have. If you only use the default VPC, you can actually do that too. It doesn't really matter. It's all configurable. You can use existing security groups or you can have the Blueprint create and manage security group for you. Here is some notes about the Rock 53 record again. Again, I recommend internal Rock 53 record for databases. Here's some notes about advanced customizations. And uh, finally, before we get started in the demo here, here's a consideration point. So uh, CloudFormation is usually used, I recommend, for transient resources. A database is a stateful resource but there are lots of benefits with using a CloudFormation provisioning a database. Essentially, once you get the, it, everything codified, it saves you uh, uh, quite a bit of time uh, and you kind of know consistently what you're gonna be provisioning. So there are some big, big benefits there. One disadvantage is CloudFormation, what it does is it will see whether or not it needs to create a new resource or brand new one if the property that you change requires a, 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 an update replacement. And it does require an update replacement to so provision a new resource then to delete the old resource and it swaps out. So uh, when it does that, uh, you lose your database. Uh, so you're gonna lose your data. So that's kind of obviously very dangerous uh, for uh, databases. A good way to guard row against that is just to set the DB cluster identifier. If you set that, what CloudFormation is trying to do is in provisioning a new resource, is gonna run into the current uh, database uh, instance ad a cluster identifier and then it's going to roll back immediately. So basically it kind of provides a nice safeguard there. There are other ways to achieve the safeguard too, but I think that's uh, one uh, good way of doing it. I definitely want to point out uh, for this demo, I'm just going to not set it because uh, it's going to be a demo, okay? Alrighty, uh, with that being said, we are ready to get going with the demo. Uh, let's first go ahead and grab the line of code we need for the gem file. So again, I'm using the reference architecture. I can open this up and I'm gonna paste this in here. But you notice there's a helper method here that I've created that makes uh, this code a little prettier. So I'm gonna use the prettier version of this. Blueprint just basically calls the same line of code there, that gem line. Okay, so that's done. Now we just bundle to make sure it is uh, um, installed, the blueprint. You can always run Lono blueprints to see all the blueprints configured with your project and Aurora serverless is now configured. 
Okay, so step one checked. Step two is to configure uh, all these values. And I'm using a multi-account strategy here. So uh, we can just uh, specify uh, the same command, lono seed, to uh, and with different lono EMVs. And then that is going to uh, create and generate starter configurations for us. So let's just go ahead and do that two times. One for development and one for production. So that's for development. And you can see it right here is creating for development. And here you can see it is creating for production. Let's uh, expand that out and just check out a little bit to kind of see what we can configure here. So you can see this blueprint is extremely flexible and customizable. And what Lono C does is actually it groups all these parameters under the kind of resource because the print, uh, the blueprint was designed this way to, uh, to kind of show you what these parameters uh, are connected to. This one's generally connected to the DB cluster. These parameters configure are connected to the scaling configuration within the DBS cluster. And here are some parameters that kind of control the DB subnet group, uh, parameter group families that control the DB cluster parameter group. This parameter will actually be connected to, uh, is used to create the security group. And this parameter, these parameters here are used to create the Raspberry Pi pretty endpoint here. Okay, so also the Lono C command will put a comment in front of the ones uh, parameters are optional. So we just want to configure the required parameters and get this up and running. So I'm just going to sort those a little bit and move this to the top. Uh, and you can see here, we're going to start with the first one. DB subnet group name must be set or subnet IDs. So the way this blueprint works is if you use an existing DB subnet group name, then uh, this is actually not going to be used at all. Okay. And the reason I designed this to I still have this kind of be requires a blank string is because just in case you set VPC and you don't set subnets IDs, it's pretty easy to forget. And then the stack rolls back. So this just kind of encourages you to set it explicitly. So then you, uh, that mistake is avoided. Okay. Uh, so we still need to uh, replace this example value. I'm going to go ahead and go to the reference architecture under VPC here, outputs and grab the private DB subnet group, which is right here. Okay, so that's the actual value. Engines Aurora, which is the only supported value currently. Again, I expect AWS to roll off support for more engines in the future. Uh, you probably wouldn't change the username and password. I'm gonna just leave it as is for the demo. Okay, um, and then down here, the cluster parameter group, this is also required. And once AWS rolls out support for more uh, engines, uh, you have to actually match the version, the family, the uh, parameter group family with the versions and those have to be uh, matching and compatible with each other or else the stack rolls back. That's a one thing that's uh, a kind of gotcha when you're working with uh, these databases with CloudFormation, okay? All right, so last one is VPC ID. Let's grab the VPC ID for the development and paste it right in here. Okay, so that that's looking good. Let's check out variables for development. The only one variable is basically a variable that controls the time zone. And this uh, is actually required because this blueprint will create a cluster parameter group and you need at least one property in there. So it doesn't matter which property, I just grabbed this one, um, but you do need a valid property in there. And each of these parameters are specific to each database engine. So you need one that works, okay? This one will work for Aurora MySQL, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and um, it's uh, just actually Aurora, it's just MySQL 5.6, right? Or, or maybe that's, okay, anyway. So uh, development is done. Let's go ahead and take a look at production. Let's go ahead and change this. So I can kind of see a little, the syntax a little more clearly. Sort the parameters, move them to the top. Let's grab the VPC, uh, D, the private DB subnet group from production. So I'm just going to the production VPC on a separate account. I'm taking multiple account strategy here. Um, and oops, we want to look at outputs, okay. There we go, uh, private DB subnet group right here. We grab this guy and put it right in here. See, this is all configurable. So let's say if you want it to use existing VPCs, existing DB subnet groups, you could do that. Okay, I'm gonna leave those other values as is. Again, you either set the DB subnet group name or the VPC IDs and you still have to explicitly set that as the blank, okay? So we just need the VPC ID and then I think we are set to uh, start launching these stacks and uh, creating a RDS Aurora serverless database. Okay, so that looks good. Let me check the variables. That looks good. All right, let's go grab the deploy commands now. There are two deploy commands here, one for development, one for production. I'm gonna grab it without the no wait for production. 
but I will do it with the uh, with the no wait for development. Okay, so there's Lono uh, EMV development, Lono CFN, deploy Aurora serverless, sure, no wait. So the no wait just basically says, don't wait for the stack to finish deploying, just do it asynchronously. So then I could run immediately the next command, which is rn Lono production, Lono EMV production, Lono CFN deploy Aurora dash serverless, dash dash sure. Now the no wait is not there. So it's that's why it's uh, showing us the status output and creating progress, okay? So let's just also verify that it's being created in the council. So here's the CloudFormation council that's creating progress. Let's also check on the, the development account. On development account, create is also in progress. So Aurora database, uh, serverless database, takes a little bit of time to uh, create, about 15 minutes or so. So uh, I'm gonna pause so y'all don't have to wait. Okay, so the Aurora serverless database has been finished or has finished creating. Um, you can see it right here, Aurora serverless create complete on uh, the dev account. If you click on events here, you can see how long it took. Uh, here it started at 15.09 and finished at 15.18. So it took about nine minutes, under 10 minutes actually to create. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now let's check the production one account also to verify. We'll go look, click right there. Overall serverless events at took uh, started at 15:09 and it finished at 15:18 about 10 minutes also. And since uh, I use uh, I kind of not use the no wait option on the second man there, you can see how long it took here to eight minutes and 46 seconds. So uh, let's actually check on some of these resources. Let's go check on here, check on uh, or the DB cluster. I guess it's not clickable from here, so you have to click on the RDS console yourself. So let's go there, and then you can see. The database is, oops, uh, database clusters right here. So there, there's the Aurora database cluster. It's completely serverless, uh, has eight units, capacity units. You can go here, I guess you can modify it more or you can modify with code and deploy again and then you can, um, you can figure the scaling properties up and down there and all that. Okay, so in uh, that same thing, uh, just to be complete here, I'm gonna also click on the development count to show you that you create one, uh, the development uh, cluster has also been created right there, okay? Uh, that is it. That covers this Aurora serverless uh, CloudFormation blueprint of the Bolt Ops Pro 1 and, and how to use it. Uh, it's pretty powerful and it's pretty cool that you could actually provision resources here without uh, having to worry about the underlying kind of um, capacity because uh, it just scales for you. Okay, cool. Hopefully that video was helpful. Uh, cheers.